Hello developers, welcome back to my channel. So for today's lesson, we are going to learn the future provider. We have talked about the provider, change notify provider in previous lesson. So if you haven't checked about that one, feel free to reach down my channel page. You will find a Flutter widget tutorial, that programming language tutorial, Flutter GetX tutorial, Flutter network tutorial, and build app from scratch tutorial so don't forget to subscribe to my channel some of my content and open the notification so you won't miss out the latest tutorial okay without further ado let's get started let's open the visual studio code and the simulator so in the main order uh, i comment out the previous example uh, in here, I return a future provider because I'm going to show you how to use this future provider in this tutorial. And for the future provider, I'm going to specify the model. So in here, I pass the data class in here. And let's look at what is the data class. The data class is just a normal class. Unlike the change notify provider, uh, we're using the change notifier makes him. However, in this future provider, you're going to make a normal class. So you don't use any maxim to update the UI. Because in the future provider, uh, it doesn't update the UI uh, when you change the internal state. So let's show you what I mean. So for the code, we have a normal data class and we define a string attribute, which is called data. And we have a method which will return our future. And I using this asynchronize and await keyword to await for one second. And then I change the internal state, which is this data attribute, to uh, this uh, new string, which is new data from server triggered by click button. And I debug printing. So the reason I do this because I want to show you this method will trigger when I click the button. However, uh, you won't update the UI. So you can see those uh, text show in the console, but you cannot see those uh, text show on the screen. Okay, that's for the data class. And we have a data future dot R. So in the data future dot R, I will return a future data type so we await for two seconds and we return this uh, data object right and as we specify we're going to uh, mention it's triggered by the future provider and we will call this load data in our uh, main dollar as we put it in this uh, create attribute so for this create as you see, uh, we will receive a function and the function will return a future data type. So when we launch the application, it will show this initial data on the screen, which is initial data. Then we're going to load our uh, data. Right? We will call this uh, load data method. Uh, we'll wait two seconds and we got the new data back. Right, and the new data bag will replace the existing one. So you will see the date, the text will change on the screen after two seconds. Then inside is a future provider example. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a scaffold widget. We have a app bar, and we have a one colon, one text widget, and one elevated button so for the text widget we just show our uh, test message on the screen and the button is to trigger this low data by click method inside our data model so i hope you have a clear understanding of this example and i'm going to uh, run this application so let's press this run button so watch carefully uh, you will see this initial data on the screen so when the app is first launched okay the app is launched so initially you will see 
the test message is initial data, and after two seconds, it turns to the new data from server triggered by the future provider. And this load data will only trigger once. So, for example, when I click this hot reload button, the app is hot reload, but the text is still the new data from server triggered by the future provider. It's no back to this initial data. Right? So, however, when I press this restart button, this uh, data will change to the initial data, and then after two seconds, it will change to this new data from server triggered by future provider. And next, let's try to press this button. Uh, when I press this button, after two seconds, you will see this new data from server trigger by click button will print it on the console. Uh, however, the test on the screen doesn't change because as we mentioned, the future provider won't update the UI. So you only update the internal state. Okay, uh, that's everything for this future provider. If you want to update the UI, uh, I highly recommend you using this change notifier provider. Uh, you can use this future provider only if you want to load some data from server and you do some configuration only for the uh, first time when the app launch. So you could consider using this future provider. Okay, so I think that's all for today's lesson. And in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to use string provider. Okay, thanks for watching. I will see you in next one.